Are you ready to learn how to get started when applying for jobs when you just graduated? In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of what it's like to find jobs or start looking for jobs just as you graduate from college. Now, making this video admittedly because one of my sisters is graduating very, very soon. I'm super excited for her and I realized that for a lot of you, as you are starting out in your career, that there isn't really a full guide. And I'm telling you this as someone who is currently running her own business, but as also someone who started looking for jobs when I was 15 years old. Mostly because at that time, no one was really looking at how old I was, only that I showed up with a skill that they needed. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of if I were to start again or things basically that I'll teach my sister as she is starting out in her path working online or finding jobs in an office. So to start off, I want to walk you through why employers are hiring in the first place. And I think this is a very important thing and something that isn't too discussed in other videos is why are these employers looking for someone to hire in the first place? And honestly, it all goes down to there is a problem that they need to solve. What I mean by that is, for example, inside of my company, 2XU, where we hire executive assistants for our clients. Whenever we're hiring, it's because the problem is we now have a client who doesn't have an executive assistant and it's the same thing for internal jobs that we've hired for when we were looking for someone to manage our marketing because we had a problem because no one was managing our marketing so you can approach basically looking for jobs in that way is when you're applying for jobs is there's a specific problem that you can solve now what is a problem you can solve if you don't have any skills you don't have experience it really is to just mostly fill out a position that they need to because someone is either moved up they were promoted and they need someone to replace that person or sadly that they left or that they, this might be a new position that they are creating so depending on where a company is at when they're hiring you that's important for you to know and the biggest reason for that is when you are doing interviews when they're showing up and talking with them you can position yourself from the angle of like i am here to solve your problem i am here to solve your problem it can't be and i know it's been a meme and joke everywhere else you can't say that oh you should hire me because you're hiring you should hire me because i have these particular skills to solve the problem that you currently have hence why you're hiring now that that's covered the first thing you want to do is you want to start assessing your learned skills what i mean by that is just because you don't have any work or job experience doesn't mean that you don't have the skills for them so start looking at maybe college clubs or organizations that you're a part of maybe you did a few events maybe you were a part of you know x y and z in college those are transferable to skills that you can do as a really good example like i said for me i started working online when i was 15 years old mostly because i was already a writer i was in a journalism club i was going on competitions i was doing that basically for my extracurricular so for me it was easy to translate that into i am now a writer as a job so whatever that looks like for you and comment below whatever extracurricular that you did i always try to reply to comments it might be tomorrow it might be two weeks later but i always do try to reply but comment below what extracurricular did you do in college or even in high school and i'll let you know what skill or job experience that can translate to because to be honest inside of my own company i've even hired people who were leaders of organization because that shows management skills they've showed project management skills because they know how to create an event from scratch basically another skill that i learned that transferred into a job when i was really young was i used to do the graphics for my mom's office and that turned into a graphic artist skill and when i was editing basically videos for my uncle's you know reunion i transformed that into a video editing in career so at different parts of my life i did do different types of gigs basically anything that i could get because that's usually what you do when you're starting out and probably something that you will have to do but when it comes to your skills again experience doesn't mean that you don't have any skills you have skills already that you're already doing you just have to translate it into what it looks like in a work environment so try to look at the current skills that you might have now let's say you don't have absolutely any let's say you were a wallflower for most of college, you didn't really do much, you kind of went through the, the grind basically of college, finished up, that's it. The reality is you still went through creating your thesis, that is your communication skills and written skills. The reality is you probably had to do some reporting in front of a class that is more of your verbal communication skills. So even if you were just a wallflower, you didn't really do much, there are still things that you can translate 
from a skill to an experience that you can apply to in work. Next is you want to look at the current job board. Now, normally in this channel, I talk about how to work from home. So I'll probably default to that is looking for jobs on online jobs at PH because that's the easiest way to get started. You don't need a lot of things for it and look at the skills basically that you found. So for example, for me, if I was starting out, I would look for writer on the, you know, looking for jobs section on online jobs at PH and I would look at that and be able to understand what are the current problems that these people who are like who are hiring for writers what are basically the problems that they're looking to solve so i'm trying to get familiar of what would be the day-to-day -day for a writer what would be expected from me what would be things that would, i would need to learn and from that the next step they want to do is again look at job boards maybe look at three to five even ten jobs that are currently hiring for the skill that you have and then go ahead and start studying there's a ton of resources for you nowadays that I didn't have. I don't think YouTube during my day was mostly for memes and funny things. We didn't have, you know, what's called YouTube University nowadays. So go ahead and learn the skills that are on there. A fun bonus thing that you can even do is you can grab a job description, put it into ChatGPT and ask it, what skills do I need to learn based on this job description? And ChatGPT will give that to you. Then you could go ahead and even ask it, where can I study these skills? Or how can I improve on these skills? And ChatGPT will give you a broken down version basically of how to get started. You have resources upon resources upon resources of being able to get started with the right skill. There's probably someone out there who's doing a workshop, someone who's done a webinar on the skill that you need to learn that you can just go ahead and get started. Now you don't need certifications although they kind of help because it shows for employers that you made the effort to learn this skill but you can just pursue ones that are on the free side basically where you don't have to pay for it and to just start absorbing basically as much as you can because then the next step is for you to start creating your resume now i do have a fuller video on the step-by-step -step of how to create a really good resume for yourself but as you are just getting started you might not have a lot of things on your resume yet the main things that you have to make sure that you put on there is your contact information your name, the job you're applying for, and the tip that I always give to people is when you start applying is customize your resume based on where you're applying. So let's say that someone says looking for a creative writer. So put on your resume that you're a creative writer. If someone puts onto the job ad basically that they are looking for a Instagram writer and you know how to write Instagram captions, then go ahead and put Instagram writer cap for captions, whatever it is on your resume. It's really good to customize it because one, it's easy for you to remember what job ad that was and then two it also makes you stand out because you're not just sending a generic resume out to everyone else then you also want to highlight the skills that you found out that you actually had and you might even want to go through at least at this point because you're just starting out any recognition any achievements that you've had in school so whether that's you running a whole program that's you creating an event that's you running and maybe even a workshop within your school that counts as experience so make sure they put that into your resume next is if applicable create your portfolio what I mean by this is if you are more creative like me create a portfolio of your best work and I do have that I actually even had those printed because when I was looking for jobs in person I would print out my portfolio and give it to a basically a magazine that I used to work with locally and that's how they reviewed my work now nowadays you don't have to print or do any of that it can all just be online you can create your portfolio using canva or if you're a writer like myself it can all just be in a google doc folder so whatever that looks like for you portfolio is essentially a proof of the past work that you've done so for future clients they're going to be able to assess if you are the right person for this or not based on this basically the type of output you've already done next is if you haven't yet create your linkedin account now we're going to use linkedin not to search for jobs but to also just basically look more legitimate when people are looking you up so creating your LinkedIn account super straightforward and simple just make sure you have your same thing as your resume you have your name your contact info have a proper photo by the way not a selfie have it be where you're at least wearing something formal have a good background smile look into the camera and just basically start following the steps that LinkedIn does guide you on what are the things that are needed on there. Again, the biggest reason for this is not to actually apply for jobs on LinkedIn, but to also later on when you actually start looking for jobs is you can slowly build your network, which is basically the next step on this is one of the advantages that you have when you are starting with a clean slate is essentially as a gr new graduate, you can then now start creating connections and friends. You can go ahead and attend like networking events and start looking and chatting at people of like, hey, I just graduated 
every day, yeah, I'm looking for a job. Or it could just be super duper friendly of like, hey, what are you up to right now? What are you doing? So what I mean by build your network is for me, honestly, if I was starting out again, if I was a fresh graduate and not someone who did find a job when I was 15 years old, I would go ahead and network and make connections and make friends basically with people because you never know who's hiring and who's told who's who is hiring. That is how I've gotten a lot of my own referrals, not just when I was still a freelancer, but also within my current business right now is I just get referrals from people because I've made friends, I've made connections with other people. So you never know. And of course you can build that network within LinkedIn. You can start connecting with people, commenting on their posts, engaging with them, not just asking them for a job outright. Give engagement and give value first before you ask and make sure it's a genuine value you're giving them so your ask doesn't have to be too awkward. Next is you want to start applying and be creative and this is the thing that I love giving as a piece of advice when someone says oh I have no experience at all how do I get a job I've done the usual route of applying through online jobs at PH or LinkedIn this is where the be creative comes in is one you want to make sure that you're tracking where you're applying I have a spreadsheet I have so many templates for you guys basically you can download and start using you can check it out in the link below of make sure you track who you're applying to because later on let's say you ne never got a response what I mean by be creative is you can either maybe send them a gift you can go to their office you can follow up with them in a different way you could try to get their attention in some other way if it's really something that you want to apply for and other ways you can be creative is you can apply as an intern like say they have an opening and they don't have entry level jobs at all or ones that apply to you you can apply like hey I'm just looking for straight up experience can I just be an intern for three months and be able to assess 90 days later if I could be a match for a new role or any of the other roles they have in the business so that's what I mean by finding ways of just kind of being again be, I keep using this these words but being creative basically is thinking outside the box of what are other people doing and how can I kind of shortcut my way through or just find my way through it so I don't have to be just one of the many people for applying for this job next and I already said this is follow up is if you've not heard from a job for three to five days make sure that you follow up with them of like hey bumping my email hey can I ask for a status on my application because you never know if your email got lost if your email accidentally got read and this is coming now from someone who has recruited a lot of people is sometimes your email does just get lost in the mail is your you know on the spreadsheet you just got skipped over it's not on purpose it just happens it's good to always just follow up even if the answer is no at least you got a response versus like not hearing back from them at all and this is why it's important to track where you apply to so then you can effectively follow up with them later on next is basically acing your interview so as you start already getting some people back you will probably be going back and forth in doing interviews with different people and what I mean by ace your interview is to just keep in mind PEC what PEC basically is is pause example clarity and knowledge so what I mean by this is when you are in an interview keep in mind that you can pause give keep in mind to give examples keep in mind to have a central point when you're talking to them and K for knowledge is make sure that you research and look up the employers before the interview and this is really important because then you can call back to those like, oh I remember I saw from your website I saw it from Facebook I saw it from LinkedIn because then that shows that you went above and beyond you were able to you were able to research them and look them up and that is always just a really good trait when you are getting interviewed you can also just watch a video that I've done very recently on how to ace your next job interview but basically peck is the one that I always want you to keep in mind again pause give examples have clarity and gain knowledge and lastly is just stay curious and show up what I mean by this is it might not be that tomorrow you will have a job just because you applied to 10 places today it might be a month from now it might be six months from now and it's gonna be tiring it's gonna be you might want to give up basically at some point especially if you've been doing it for a while but to be honest you never know for every job application you send out every process that you go through every hiring process you get to be more and more confident for the next one and you start getting knowledge of what are what is expected basically what are the things to look out for as you're applying for these jobs and you might have to kiss a few frogs before you find your prince and what I mean by that is you might have to go through a few employers who are not that good before you know how, what to watch out for basically what are the red flags to watch out for before you find the one and know that there's so many variations of jobs nowadays that you can be just creative about it you can do freelancing you can do work from home you can find work from an office whatever that looks like and whatever works for you 
you have to find what makes sense for you and you don't have to feel the pressures of other people they'll say oh you should do this oh you should do that just find your own path and honestly these times in your life is going to be the most exciting and the loneliest as well just because you are out in the world but at the same time you're trying to figure out who you are and it's just all part of the process now if you guys like this video make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below again what are the skills you're trying to learn i'll try to give you some resources i am here to help and if you still haven't yet make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so don't miss any videos every sunday and thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here hope you guys have an amazing day and remember that small steps matters and i'll see you in the next video bye